My name is Jim DiCarlo. I'm an associate professor of neuroscience at the McGovern Institute for Brain Research at MIT. The brain is essentially a computing device. I like to think of this network of tissue as it's like a device from the future has been given to us and we have the privilege of figuring out how it actually works. And it's just sitting there between our ears waiting to be discovered. The problem that our lab is most interested in is the problem of visual object recognition. And that's the ability of you to recognize my face or any other object that you've encountered very, very quickly. This is something that we do remarkably well, yet machines are still very far behind us, even after decades of work of trying to emulate our abilities in terms of solving visual recognition. We have this intuition that our brain is somehow storing photographs in its head, but it's, it's storing nothing like photographs. It's storing transformed patterns of neural activity. So it takes the photograph on your eye and transforms it to some new pattern of neural activity, a new neuronal code that represents the object. And how that computation occurs, we, we still don't know. And so our lab has structured its work in two directions. One direction is to understand the nature of that code in these high-level regions of your brain. And if we understand the spatial nature and temporal nature of those neural patterns of activity, we might someday be able to interact with that code so as to replace lost function or to augment normal function. And if we understand that code, that leads to our second line of work, which is that we might be able to understand how to even compute that code, how to build machines that compute like our brain computes. The central computational problem of visual recognition is your ability to recognize an object in a way that's tolerant or invariant to the transformations of its image. So when you look at my face, you can still recognize it's my face even if I change my pose slightly or the illumination conditions on me. There are two basic hypotheses of how the brain can solve that problem. One is that the brain automatically computes this. Somehow when it learns the information at one position, it's innately able to move that information to other positions and therefore recognize across the position. The other theory is that the brain is constantly learning from the visual environment that it lives in. It's using the visual inputs to learn what objects look like at different positions. Our recent work showed that that second theory is much more likely to be true. We showed that if we manipulate the experience of a subject while they're making eye movements to different objects, that is while they're varying the position of the object on the retina, we can alter their perception and their neurons in a way that's consistent with them using that information to learn what an object looks like at different positions. Our work is fundamentally basic science. We want to understand how this computer between our ears is able to do this remarkable process of visual recognition. The likely applications of understanding that work are first going to be computer vision application. So as we understand how our brain does this, we take those ideas and build computer vision systems that work more like our own brain. The longer term view is that as we understand these basic processes, then we can think about molecular tools to improve function or to restore function for individuals that have lost the function of that part of their brain. Neuroscience is really ripe for progress right now, especially at the interface of neuroscience itself and computer science. On the neuroscience side, we have developments in technology where we can better monitor the electrical activity of neurons in these networks that are doing the computing. And on the computational side, we have this inexorable advance of computing power, and it's the synergy of those two that I think is most exciting.